The Peabody Essex Museum is located in the seaport city of Salem, Massachusetts. Salem is known for its ports and trade back in the 16th and 17th centuries. The roots of the Peabody Essex Museum were founded back to 1799 with the East India Marine Society. This society consisted of Salem captains and large cargo ships that had sailed to the tip of South Africa. They then established the museum, bringing in many different objects from around the world. These objects came from places like China, India, and other places with very diverse cultures. Today, the museum pertains maritime art and history, American art, Asian art, oceanic art, and African art. The museum was built to educate the Salem residents about the rest of the world, which they knew little about. The only way to travel to these diverse places was by boat, and most Salem residents did not travel around the world at that time. To educate the people, sea captains brought objects and artifacts from around the world to Salem. These were then placed for the public to see in the museum. Through these objects, the people saw connections and differences between their culture to the diverse ones. The people were beginning to understand and know about the rest of the world for the first time. These lead to the present-day beliefs and thoughts that the people of Essex County know about the rest of the world. The sea captains of Salem brought clamshells, poisoned arrows, silver hookahs, and other items to the museum that they collected from India and the Far East. These engaged the curiosity or the longing for informity about the rest of the world that the people had. After the American Revolution, more places around the world were available for the captains to get items from, mostly China. China engaged the interest of the captains because of its commerce and intricate Chinese porcelain. The Salem residents were intrigued by the Chinese daily ritual of drinking fragrant tea from delicately painted Chinese porcelain cups. The people were envious of these beautiful cups and wanted them in their own households. They also loved the delicate and characteristic Chinese tea, which captains imported through trade. It was a fantasy of the residents to have these cups and to marvel at their designs in the museum. The sea captains also brought paintings, jewelry, silver, and furniture from China. The paintings educated the people about the lush landscapes of China. Through the paintings, the people saw churches and temples which taught them about the Chinese religion. They also learned about the architecture of the Chinese through the various paintings. Overall, the Salem residents were intrigued by the Chinese because through these objects, they learned of the tranquility and structure of China and its wealth. The Chinese painted many lush botanical paintings that the sea captains brought to the museum. The artists would try to paint the spirit or sense of the plant revealed. They even incorporated Western techniques into these paintings. The most popular flower they painted is the peony. It is connected to the imperial family representing wealth. The items brought from the East Indies and China transformed the city of Salem. People could now purchase intricate paintings and Chinese goods. The people had a large demand for the Chinese luxuries such as their silk, porcelain, and tea. The beautiful Chinese silk was a symbol of Chinese wealth to the residents, especially to the women. To them, an intricate red or blue silk shawl or wrap symbolized that they were wealthy. They craved these silks marveling at the elegant Chinese women who were privileged enough to wear them in their everyday lives. They thought that if they could wear these, they would seem wealthy to others. Because the captains brought artifacts to the museum, the people developed a lust for them, which led to their fascination and demand for them. The process of creating silk is a very complicated and long process. The Chinese were masters at creating this highly profitable fabric. The king's the emperor had a book of woodblock prints with the process of creating silk made. This book quickly spread throughout China. Chinese silk became a very big part of their economic stability. Mostly women created the silk by first caring for the silkworms, then when they formed cocoons, women would unravel them and dye and weave the threads into silk. The silk was also used and incorporated into paintings, showcasing different styles and people wearing the vibrant fabric. These people were norm normally of high social class in these paintings.
The knowledge the sea captains brought to the people of Salem through their objects greatly impacted their views of the world. They had a respect and envy of the diverse lifestyles and landscapes of other places like China. The people became aware of cultural and ethnic diversities. They did not wonder about the rest of the world, they were simply educated about it. Because of this education, they became aware of their place in the world. To them, a sort of identity was formed in comparison to the diversities of the rest of the world. For when one is aware of others, they become aware of themselves. Essex Museum features many different exhibitions offered to the public. One that is currently available is the Emperor's Private Paradise, Treasures from the Forbidden City. It includes the components of the Emperor's secret retreat located beneath the Forbidden City. Within it are 90 objects of wealth of the Emperor, such as murals, paintings, wall coverings, architectural elements, and jades. These allow the public a glimpse into the life of the Zeolong Emperor, who is one of the most wealthiest and most prestigious men in the world. It is available at the Peabody Essex Museum until January 9th. Even though many years have passed, the Peabody Essex Museum and East India Marine Society still continue to educate the Salem residents about the rest of the world. Mm -hmm.